This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news the cost of money is ending its extended cheap period. There is a whole generation unused to its normal level with the benchmark is about 5% with lending costs above that. We start today noting that American bond yields are moving ever higher. The yield on the US Treasury 10-year has hit its highest since November 2007. Markets see the Fed encouraged to stay hawkish on good data and the US federal deficit situation, which will need more issuance at a time of very partisan election uncertainty and rising risks of shutdowns. Investors insist on compensation for these risks. Inflation-protected 10-year treasuries rose past the 2% benchmark for the first time since 2009. In China, however, they made a modest reduction in their loan prime rates yesterday. Markets were disappointed at the timid policy action, though. The August fixing cut the one-year loan prime rate by 10 basis points to 3.45%, a record low, in an effort to ease borrowing costs for businesses, but maintained the five-year rate, the home loan benchmark, at 4.2%. It was a disappointing regulatory response that saw foreign banks cutting their China forecast further and the property sector revealed even more signs of distress. The commercial office market in both Beijing and Shanghai is tightening significantly, extending the residential property sector woes into a wider sector. More tenants in Shanghai's Grade A offices terminated their leases than signed them during the June 2023 quarter, the first time that has happened since 2015. Further, Beijing experienced its third consecutive quarter of rising Grade A office vacancies, also the highest level since 2015. But their property crisis is much wider than A-grade buildings in icon cities. It is said to be triggering a liquidity crisis for municipal and provincial borrowers that pose risks to the country's whole financial system. Meanwhile, Taiwanese export orders rose in July from June to be their highest level since November. Still, they're still 12% lower than year-ago levels, but that is a big improvement on the 25% shortfall in June. Hong Kong recorded a 1.8% inflation rate in July, a little change from the 1.9% in June. And Thailand reported its second quarter GDP growth yesterday, and it slowed much more than anyone saw coming. The Thai economy is far from irrelevant, and a big miss like this will have regional ramifications. In Australia, and just like their banks, insurance giant IAG has announced sharply higher profits while claiming the future is cloudy. After-tax profits rose 37%, or 140%, depending on the metric you choose. Premium income was up 10.6%. They also said New Zealand premiums rose 12%. They expect the 2023-24 insurance profit to be between approximately $1.2 billion and $1.45 billion. That would be a huge 50% increase from the current $803 million. And the US Treasury 10-year yield will start today at 4.34%, up 9 basis points from this time yesterday and a 16-year high. And the price of gold will start today at $1,894 an ounce. That's up $4 from this time yesterday. And oil prices are down 50 US cents at just over $80 a barrel in the US, while international Brent price is just over $84 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today a little change at just on 59.2 US cents. Against the Aussie, though, we're softish at 92.4 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're also softer at 54.3 Euro cents. That all means our trade-weighted index is now at 68.3 and down another minor 10 basis points from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price is a little lower again today, now at $26,038 and down 0.3% from yesterday. Volatility of the past 24 hours has been low, just on plus or minus 0.9%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. <laughs>